For many people, the DC Universe Classics remains the quintessential action figure line for people who are fans of the DC Universe. It's true, they gave us a wide variety of characters that we never received under any other company banner. Not DC Direct, not Hasbro, not Kenner or Toy Biz. Mattel really did give us a groundbreakingly huge selection of characters, and quite often they got their character sculpts and design perfect, thanks to the Four Horsemen. However, there were times when we received sculpts of characters that were, how shall we say, less than satisfactory. In this video, I'm going to outline just a few of the characters that not only I myself, but many other fans of the DC Universe Classics felt a little bit let down by, either due to the sculpting or the execution of said figure. Let's talk about Big Barda. Big Barda is a wildly popular New Gods character who has her place of origins on the planet Apocalypse, and she once served Darkseid and was one of Granny Goodness's Furies until she defected to the side of good and helped Scott Free, aka Mr. Miracle, escape to planet Earth where she married Scott Free and did some time with the Justice League as well as the Birds of Prey. Now anyone who's familiar with the character of Big Barda knows that there's no small reason as to why she's called Big Barda. And that's because Big Barda's, well, big. Taller than Superman, taller than Batman, taller than Wonder Woman, and definitely taller than Scott Free, Mr. Miracle. She pretty much towers over top of everybody. Which brings us to the problem of the fact that the Four Horsemen sculpted Big Barda much, much too small. Now at first you could think, well, we're just gonna chalk this up to the fact that she used a basic female buck, but she didn't. You look at the figure and you know that they actually had to sculpt all new parts for this figure. So the question remains, why didn't they sculpt Big Barda as being big and not Little Barda? Cause that's what we got. We got Little Barda. I mean, don't get me wrong. The sculpt looks good. It's just too small. Another time that DC Universe Classics collectors felt a little bit let down by the sculpting of a figure was with the Starfire slash Adam Strange 2-pack. The problem with the 2-pack was that Starfire had a uniboob. That was the main problem. For a character who's known for being fairly busty, at least having the breasts kind of separated by a cleavage line would have made more sense for her, but instead they just opted for a uniboob where it didn't even make any sense because Starfire doesn't actually wear a shirt. Now the argument can and has been made for why Starfire has a uniboob in the two-pack and it's simply because, well, Starfire Out of Strange 2-pack was available where kids also buy toys and they figured that might be just a little bit obscene and too grown up for children to be reaching for as well. I would argue that A, the children didn't give the two-pack more than a passing glance because it's not something that they would see on television or even know what it was. And more importantly, let's look at Power Girl who was sold where children can find toys. Her breasts are ginormous and have a giant butt crack boob and a boob window. And they depicted her breasts accurately. Aside from the uniboob issue, a lot of fans of the DC Universe Classics also felt that they put very little work into this figure, as in almost no new sculpting, and more importantly, that the skin and hair tone was very much off in comparison to how she appeared in the comic books. Now truthfully, I think that Mattel could have addressed this issue and made a whole bunch of money for themselves in the process by releasing an exclusive Teen Titans multi-pack. One with Cyborg, Robin, Beast Boy, Raven, an updated Starfire figure, Kid Flash, and Wonder Girl. And I think that that probably would have sold like hotcakes off of Maddie Collector, at the very least. We all saw how fast the Legion 12 pack sold out on their site, so there is no doubt that this would have been a hot seller on Maddie Collector. Another time that I was less than satisfied with the DC Universe Classics release was actually Cyborg Superman. Now the Cyborg Superman is a well-loved Superman rogue character, and really he deserved to have a brand new sculpt given to him, but he wasn't. You see, the Cyborg Superman was actually released first in the DC Superheroes line of figures, which predates Mattel DC Universe Classics. And from what we got back in the day, it was an excellent action figure. However, the sculpt 
was lacking in some areas in that the legs were always too far apart. And so it made standing up this figure, especially once the joints got a little bit loose, almost impossible. The legs always want to split apart and the figure wants to do the splats on your shelf. It's unsightly and a pain in the butt. Well, when Mattel started releasing all of their lantern spectrum based action figures in the various Green Lantern waves, they gave us an updated version of Cyborg Superman, but only in color and paint apps alone, not in sculpt. Now I'm sure that the reason why we got the Cyborg Superman in the first place was because they said, we've already got the body, let's just rework the color scheme a little bit and we don't have to pay anyone to tool up a new figure and we can give them Cyborg Superman. So there is something to be said about them using what they have to give us something they might not have been able to give us otherwise. Now, when you place the Cyborg Superman alongside other DC Universe classic figures, you can tell that there's something not quite right about this figure, something that doesn't quite fit in. For one, the buck of the Cyborg Superman is bigger than Superman himself. Next, there's the wide leg stance that doesn't fit in or match any of the DC Universe Classics figures. I myself have a DC Superhero Superman figure that I dremeled down some of the plastic so his legs wouldn't have such a wide stance. Or could it be possibly the muted tones that they chose to use for the Cyborg Superman as opposed to the brighter colors that they are normally accustomed to using with the DC Universe Classics line? Either way, this figure just seems to be a little bit of a letdown in comparison to what I'm sure Mattel was capable of giving us. And a lot of fans were left wanting with this Cyborg Superman figure. Now, another time I feel like Mattel completely dropped the ball in their treatment of a well-loved popular DC Universe character is with that of Superboy Prime. Mattel's version of Superboy Prime has two very major problems. Problem number one is that Superboy Prime is too big. He's just too tall. Superboy Prime is supposed to be a teenager, and so you'd figure they would have made him maybe roughly the size of Kid Flash, or possibly the signature series Captain Marvel Jr., but instead, they made him bigger than the grown-ups. This Superboy Prime came in a wave alongside a New 52 Batman and a New 52 Superman, and he was taller than both of them, which is a really strange decision or a really dumb oversight, if you ask me. Problem number two is that this DC Universe Classics figure has by far one of the worst, ugliest, most hideous head sculpts I've ever seen on a DC figure at any time ever made by any company. It's horrible. But seriously, it's a terrible head sculpt. I don't think it's down to just how it was painted. I think that it was sculpted really badly. And I don't know what the four horsemen were thinking when they came into work drunk that day and sculpted that head. If it actually was the Four Horsemen, I mean, they generally do good work, so I don't know who did that head. Hopefully it wasn't the Four Horsemen. I feel it's such a bad figure, in fact, that I chose not to add him to my DC Universe Classics display as the Superboy Prime in my Villains section. Instead, I chose to slot in the DC Direct version. Yeah, he's roughly the same size, so he doesn't actually beat the DC Universe Classics version in scale. However, it's a much more attractive figure, and the head sculpt is far superior to the DC Universe Classics one. To me, this figure just looks a whole lot more like Superboy Prime, and it looks a whole lot better on the shelf with the rest of my DC Universe classics. Now, for my final figure that I like to talk about today, it's one that I actually don't own, and that's the DC Universe Classics Signature Series Ra's al Ghul. Now, you'd figure with such a well-loved Batman villain like Ra's al Ghul, they'd want to put just a little bit more time and effort into this figure to make sure they got it just right for the fans. Only they didn't. And I think that partially it's stuff like this, releasing this substandard figure is one of the things that killed the Signature series, along with some, some other things as well. There were some people who were very happy to receive this Rachel Ghoul figure and others that just looked at it and they were like, ugh. Fans, I think in general, were just not happy with this offering from the DC Universe Classics Signature series. And I think it fell horribly short of the mark of giving us a Rachel Ghoul figure that commanded the kind of respect that the character himself would command. To this day, my favorite Rachel Ghoul figure is actually the DC Direct Hush version of Rachel Ghoul, and he's not even wearing a shirt. So really, if you want to have a suited slash cloaked version of Rachel Ghoul, honestly, you're going to be putting one together yourself, custom kit bash style. 
Now, I don't mean to seem like I'm just crapping on the DC Universe Classics and the Four Horsemen or whatever, because I love the DC Universe Classics. It is one of my absolute favorite action figure lines and likely will have a soft spot in my heart until the day I die, right alongside the Superpowers collection. I'm a huge DC fan, and the size and scope of the DC Universe Classics was just amazing. And you could also mix and match in other Mattel DC superheroes figures, and you had yourself an incredible array of characters that we've never gotten before, and I somehow don't think we're ever going to get after. This is just a video taking the piss out of some of the shortcomings of, in my opinion, one of the greatest action figure lines of all time. Seriously, if you missed out on these figures, if you started collecting after they came out, you've missed a really excellent time to be a toy hunter and to be walking the aisles of Target and Walmart and Toys R Us and hitting up eBay and finding those deals because it was just amazing to find them there. But with that knowledge, I must bid you farewell and say adieu. I've spent enough time on this video and it's all the time that I have for today. So thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please slap a thumbs up on it. Leave any comments that you have down in that comment section below. Subscribe if you think you would like to see more of this kind of content. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.